Hello there, it's Will Woodgate from Stacks for Stacks and today I'm excited to talk about my brand new viewport tech stack which I'm releasing. This is a free stack element which you can download from the website. Purpose of it is basically to enable you to have text scale in to fit different screen sizes. Um, I've kept it relatively simple, um, tried not to make it too complicated and it should be quite useful in any sort of project you're doing where you need text to scale responsively down to sort of mobile size or tablet sizes, things like that. So what I'm going to do is I've got a basic page set up here in uh, Rapid Weaver, just a simple site. Today for this example I'm using my media Rapid Weaver theme from the Theme Flood website. I've just put in a block of text here already just to get the page started. I'm going to open up the stack elements library here and I'm just going to add a viewport text stack to my page like so. We're going to pretend in this example that we want to put in a heading which we want to scale on different screen sizes. So I'm just going to scroll up here to the top and just put a text stack in. And I'm just going to put in some sample text. Um, a heading. Here we go. So that's just some, uh, some sample heading text. As normal, you would select the, uh, the viewport text stack in stacks edit mode like this, and the relevant settings are shown on the right hand side. We've got the option to either apply the text scaling either to text you've put inside the viewport text stack. Alternatively, you can target other elements on the page, such as perhaps a menu navigation bar, title, slogan, footer, anything like that. You just specify um, class or ID selector names in the format of a comma separated list. But we're just going to keep things simple today and stick with text we've put inside our stack. So what I'm going to do is just preview the page now in Rapid Weaver. And because we are now building on the sort of mobile first principle which you might have heard of, I'm going to start by getting this text scaling correctly on the sort of iPhone. So ideally what I'm going to do, and although this may be a bit of an extreme example, I want to try and achieve this so that I can get this entire heading on one single line. I realise that's kind of make it quite small, but you you know you get the idea of what we're we're trying to build here. So I'm just going to switch back to edit mode and I'm going to change the scale amount. I'm just going to try 4%. There's quite a lot of sort of trial and error involved in this stack. You will sort of have to keep toggling between edit and preview mode quite often like I'm doing now. You can see we're nearly there, we've got it just down, we've just got one word on a new line. So I'll go back and just make that fractionally smaller. So I'll try like so. There we go. So it's all on uh, on one line now, which is what we're after. So the next stage is to look at what this is going to do on iPad portrait. So I put it up like so and as you can see our heading has grown in size. It's still on one single line but it's it's increased in font size which is what we're after. And again, if I jump up to iPad Landscape, it's a nice big size, nice and clear for people to read. And if I go up to full width, you can see it's working there as well. Now, what I've done with this stack is I've set up, and I've done this on purpose, I've called it a stop point. And the idea of this setting is that you can stop at a point you know, stop at a certain screen size to prevent your text size scaling up to infinity. The issue with viewport text and uh, sort of viewport scale text is that if you're viewing a website on a very large web browser, let's say you're fortunate enough to own a 40 inch monitor or something, there is a danger that the text might become too large on a screen size because you're constantly measuring the width of the screen and scaling the text based on the width of the screen. So the stop point is there to provide a buffer. So when the screen grows beyond that width, your text will stop scaling. And when the text stops scaling, that's when this maximum size will kick in. So what we need to do is to set this um, maximum size. Is so I need to go back into Rapid Weaver Preview mode. I need to just use the normal drag handles here and just resize the page down. Now you can see how this heading is scaling beautifully, doing exactly as we want it to do. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep just putting my browser up until that stop point kicks in. And I know when it will do it because it, I'll suddenly see the, the text jump. There it goes like that and it's no longer scaling. 
So I'm just going to creep back a few pixels, uh, like so, okay. And I'm just going to look now at what size this text is, so the, the maximum size in pixels that this text has grown to. To do that, I'm just going to right click on the text and select Inspect Element. This will pull up the developer tools in Rapid Weaver. I'm going to click on the Styles tab over here on the right. When you click on the computed panel here, and I'm just going to have a look, and I can see that our font size is 41 pixels. So the text is permitted to grow to maximum size of 41 pixels just before that break point. I should say that stop point. So if I go back into edit mode, I'm going to change this maximum size to 41 pixels. I'm going to leave line height as it is because that seems to be working fine. Back into preview. I'm going to start sort of about there and now I'm just going to gradually scale my web browser window up. Like so. And as you can see, although we've just surpassed the stop point, our text isn't jumping in size, it's, it's remaining at a steady size now, and that's exactly what we want. Um, if you've not got developer tools enabled in Rapid Weaver, you simply go into, I've got to try and remember the where it is now, I think it's general, uh, yes, here we go. So in the general tab in Rapid Weaver 6, it's enable web developer tools. Just make sure that option is clicked, um, is it ticked here. And then when you right click anywhere on the page, you get this extra inspect element option. And that's what you can pull up to inspect your text sizing. So yeah, that's that's this stack really working. Um, there are a couple more options I might as well just talk about quickly. You've got the fallback size for web browsers which don't support viewport scale text. Uh, typically that would be your browsers like Internet Explorer 8, Internet Explorer 9 and I think some older versions of Firefox lack support for this. Uh, so that's just there as a safety net so that people visiting your website will still be able to see the text and it's presented at a sensible size. The print size, that's a pretty important setting. It just ensures that when people print your page or they save it as a PDF, the text you set is, a, is an appropriate size still. The animation speed, that's optional. Um, sometimes, you know, if you want to actually have the text size animate as you change the width of the browser window or the device orientation, you can have a little subtle animation effect going on. I generally just leave it set at zero. You know, I don't see it as, a, as a, an essential aspect of the, uh, the setup of this stack, but you might choose to, uh, to do so. So I think that's probably all there is to explain about this stack, really. It is, it's going to be one which you might take a little bit of practice to, to get the hang of. Once you've got it working, though, you understand what the settings do. It is a, a really nice, effective stack. I've been using this with a private client recently in the past few weeks, and it's saved hours and hours of time. It's been really good to use. It's been a brilliant stack to use in their project, and they are really pleased with the results of it. If you've got any questions about the stack, then feel free to let me know. Um, it's like I say, this is a free stack. It's going to be available from the Stacks for Stacks website, and I look forward to speaking with you again soon.